we're finally at episode 10. Um, thank you for subscribing and all the support so far. The bike has uh, the exhaust installed and the bike is all tuned up now. So everything's done, which is good news. Um, and for most of you, this is the part where um, you stop tinkering around with the engine and start beginning your um, transmission upgrades. But uh, for me, there's still a little, bit, a little bit more power that I can extract out of the engine um, without having to do any extensive engine modifications. And I'll show you what I do. So on this side of the bike, um, unless you're doing a lot of engine modification or upgrading your bike's displacement to 70cc, um, you would basically leave this airbox stock. Some people would suggest doing a pot filter for your bike, something like this. Um, and for a bike like a Honda Ruckus, which uses a CV carb, you would want to install a Snorco, just because those types of carbs need better or smoother airflow to perform well. Um, but for a slide carb like this one, a pot filter on top of the carb would work just fine. At the same time, a lot of people on the forum will tell you not to do that because you'll run into a lot of trouble. Um, you won't be able to ride the bike in the rain. Um, your bike will be more sensitive to temperature changes and so on and so forth. So I'm going to share with you a little modification, a little modification that I always do to all my bikes. It's proven on the dyno and proven on the test bench that it flows better flows the same if not better than a pot filter. Um, they always require up jetting so it will cost you $10-$15 to buy new jets and a bit of your time to rejet your carb but apart from that this modification is by far my favorite mod because um, the engine really wakes up from it. On the downside your bike will be a bit louder actually it will be a lot louder so it's um, it's entirely up to you if you like this mod but the good thing about it is it's also reversible so you can see here this is the air box um, and this modification applies to most bikes I've done it to my ruckus before I changed it over to a pot filter you might ask why did I change to a pot filter then for the ruckus it's really just for looks I think it looks a lot better with a pot filter especially with the exposed frame of that bike with this bike though it's a fairing bike I ride it to work and um, the air box is quite small here too so I would just leave it as this and not install a pot filter like what you saw earlier. Like I mentioned earlier, um, this modification outflows most of the air filters out there in the aftermarket industry. Um, the stock air box that comes from the factory is usually extremely restrictive. There are multiple baffles inside to reduce the noise, um, reduce the emission, and also reduce the power of the bike. And um, the mod that I do is drilling holes into the front cover of your airbox before the filter. Doing so, your bike does get a bit louder, but you gain a lot more horsepower. You can definitely feel a big difference after doing this modification. Um, the best part about this mod too is unlike a pot filter where you can't really ride in the rain because there's nothing covering your filter, you still have your perfectly fine and um, well engineered air box that is designed to block out rain. Um, with the exception of a few extra holes, which you can see here I put tape and whenever I want to tune my bike, if the weather gets too cold or if it's raining, I can cover all the holes up. So this mod is by far my favorite and the best mod to the bike you would definitely feel a lot more power. Follow along and I'll document the changes to my bike as I open up the airbox. If you're running this engine, you're probably going to have the same airbox as me and you also have the foam air filter. A lot of people would recommend changing it to the Melossi Red Filter for a better flow. But um, if, money, if you don't have a lot of money and you do want to improve the performance of your overall airbox, one mod that you could do for free is to drill holes into your airbox because the stock airbox is quite restrictive. So in order to do that, grab, your, grab yourself 
First you want to take off the airbox cover which you can see right here. Grab a piece of cardboard, uh, grab a piece of uh, wood where your airbox can rest on. Grab newspaper so it doesn't scuff up your airbox on the surface or the face of it. After which you can drill three or four holes into the front. As you can see when this airbox goes over the filter air will be directly sucked in from here and this is where the snorkel is so air will be will go straight across compared to here where it travels through a 90 degree angle in the front of the engine where it sucks in hot air into the air box and then across the filter um, but as a disclaimer when you're doing this make sure you don't travel in a lot of dusty area because the more you open up your air box the less the more likely it's gonna suck in uh, dirt without being filtered so as you can see here in the air box there is um, reinforcement grids um, do not drill on through the reinforcement it, but if you did it's not a big deal it's just better to leave it leave the skeleton intact um, but once you have but you can already see where you can drill the holes so here you can drill one two three four five six a maximum of six holes I'm just gonna go with um, probably four for now the good thing about drilling holes into your air box is um, once you've drilled holes right through your air box um, depending on the weather condition or depending on your jetting you can always tape it up you can tape up each individual hole to perfect your tuning that uh, if you use a red velocity filter you can't do that you always have to rejet if you uh, change any settings on your bike so there's a few ways you can do this. For me, being um, the picky person that I am, I like my hose evenly spaced so it looks good on the bike. For other people, they don't really care, so it doesn't really matter. But first of all, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna drill a hole through here, and I'm gonna make sure that each hole is evenly spaced apart so they look good. You can follow along and see how I do it. So you can see here, I drilled a hole right through it. This is probably a bit of an overkill for most of you, but uh, but um, this is how I do it. Just because I want my holes to be evenly spaced out and look good. And there you have it. So now you have your four holes marked. You can drill right through it, like so, and then you can use a bigger hole. I would recommend anything bigger than a quarter inch drill because um, even the stock hole right here is larger than a quarter inch. So now that all four of my holes are drilled with a uh, quarter inch bit, it's time to step it up to the largest size that my drill can fit, which is a 1332. And there you go, all done. Clean it up and put it back in your uh, bike and you can ready to start some more jet tuning. Okay, so now that you see the air box is back on, the holes are all covered up by duct tape. And you're probably wondering why I did that. And that's because previously I had a lean issue um, with my bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and rejet it all the way up to a 70 main jet. Um, previously it was running a 60 main jet stock. Thinking that it was a 53 main jet stock, I installed a 62 main jet. Um, the bike ran fine, but I realized after a while um, that the bike runs better while the choke is on. So that tells me that my bike is probably a bit lean. And that is not good for a two-stroke engine because lubrication is part of the mixture. So right now I'm going to go ahead and reject my carburetor. 
um, to a 70 main jet and I'm going to open up these holes one by one to see if it improves performance or worsens it. Thank you very much for watching this video and please stay tuned for more tuning videos.